start. All right. Uh, today's topic is very difficult. And, uh, needs a lot of demonstration and, and, and hopefully we can get used to the joints for this topic. Okay, before we start, let me ask you one question. What is a sigma bond? It's uh, when the, the bonds are linear, like on the, the, the linear plane. Linear. I think I got you what I mean. It's when what? Two orbitals, yeah, two orbitals. overlap mm -hmm. along the axis, yeah. like head to head. And so the bond is two orbitals look over look like this. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can imagine, if a bond is made like this, that gives this bond a property that is rotations along the bond is flexible. So this possible a sigma bond is free of rotation. And because of that, we have today's topic called confirmation. When you have a sigma bond between two carbons, Okay, this is very simple. This is a thing. Two carbons. If you have a single bond between two carbons, and because the rotation of the single bond along the single bond, the molecule will have different arrangement. Hey, look, I'm rotating it. You see that? The molecule can look like this, like that, like that, like this. All these. And each picture, if I'm taking the picture of the molecule, each picture I took, here, like here, and of course, moving money can move a lot faster. The rotation is a lot faster. But each picture, each frozen moment, is called a confirmation. Okay, it's called a confirmation. Why do we have a confirmation? Because of the rotation of the double bond, of the single bond. Now, in order to study confirmations, a good way is to look along the bond you're interested in. To look direct straight at the, 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 the bond. I mean, your eyesight is, is on the same line of the bond. That's like looking along the carbon carbon single bond. So that means for you guys, you're looking right straight at this carbon. So your eyesight is what? Basically means what? You're looking at one carbon, another carbon is what? Behind you, you cannot see it. That's what I mean, look along the single bond. Does it make sense? Now, if you look along the single bond, if I make a confirmation like this, what you see is, make a confirmation like this, what you see is, take a look, on this carbon, that is here, you see that? Hydrogen what? Here, here, and down, you see that? Hydrogen here, here, and what? Down, the carbon, Behind it, you cannot see. That means there's a dot behind the circle. You cannot see. What you see is only what? Hydrogen here and here and up. Here and here up. You can see that? I'm making the same thing here. And we call this drawing Newman projection. That's very helpful for us to study different confirmation, to explain things. Make sense, guys? Again, you're looking along this one. What does circle mean? That circle means a bomb. You can imagine that's a bomb. Okay, that's the bomb. You see what? One carbon, right? So this is the one carbon you see. How do you think it's like what? Down, down, down. See that? And the heart behind it, you don't see. That means you don't have a dot. It's behind the bond. But you do see the high you striking out. Down, down, down. They're the same. You see that? Projection means what? I'm actually project the things on this along this bond. That's what we see. Huh. Newman projection. Does it make sense? Now, once you understand Newman projection, let's take a look. What types of confirmations we're most interested in? When the groups on these two adjacent carbons are as far as away from each other, like this. Again, you can see that. When you put new projection, is like this again, right? Like this. See that? 
So that means these groups, of course, they're hydrogens. This is simple. These hydrogens are what? As far as away from each other. These two, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60 degrees, 60. The total is 3, 60. It's a circle. So in this conformation, if I take a picture of the molecule in this conformation, when the groups on these two adjacent carbons are as far apart as possible away from each other, and we call this conformation stacker. Okay, we call this conformation stacker. Now, from the stagger, is that stagger? Can you see that? You see that? Stagger? If I turn to 60 degree, what do I have? They're close to each other now, right? If I draw this one, it will be like, let me draw this one for you. How do I draw this one? Okay, that's staggered, Newman. So what if I want to draw this confirmation? Again, you start with a circle. See that? In the front, you have a carbon. Let's say this one up. This is the three hydrogens of what? In the front, carbon. The one behind it, I can see it, and they're what? They're kind of overlapped. So in order to show it, I show like a close to. Does it make sense? Okay, I mean, they're actually right behind this bond, but I want to show it. So kind of like close, but without pointing inside the circle. That means that's from the carbon behind. That's this. And in this conformation, the groups, of course, in this case, this case the hydrogens, are what? The closest to each other. Each one, you can see they're right, right on that. And we call this conformation eclipsed. It's understandable, right? That word eclipse means what? It means it's right on top. You can even see it because it's basically eclipsed. So, if I rotate the single bond, take a look. This is eclipsed. Rotate 60 degrees, then it becomes what? Staggered. Is that right? Rotate 60 again, it becomes eclipsed. eclipsed. Rotate 60 degree again, staggered. staggered. Rotate 60 degree again, eclipsed, and so on and so on. So totally, for 330, uh, 360 degree of a circle, we should have what? Six of those together. Three eclipsed and what? Three, three staggered. Does that make sense? If you start with this point, you can rotate all 360 degree. You will experience what? Three eclipsed and three staggered. Yes. So does the eclipse also, or excuse me, the sixty degree angle also apply with like more than three bonds, like more than three hydrogen bonds? Like you had another hydrogen bond, like with that. What do you mean hydrogen bond? So if you have like a fourth hydrogen bond, would the sixty degree still apply, or would it be a different? Angle? Four hydrogen bond. Where is four hydrogen? Well, like I, was just, I was giving an example. The carbon cannot have four bonds. Or, the carbon only has three bonds. Okay. Because the other one is bonded with the carbon only have four right. bonds total. So on this carbon, those only three groups. In this case, those three groups are hydrogen. We will learn if one of them is not hydrogen. We will see that right away. Okay. But this is the simplest model to explain what is conformation, what is staggered, what is eclipse. Does this make sense? Now, let me ask you. Which one do you think between the eclipsed and the staggered, which one do you think the molecule is more stable? More stable means less energy. This less energy or this less energy? What do you think? The, that one. That one less energy? Yeah. What do you think? Um, I think staggered. Staggered or low form? Which one? Staggered has less energy. Why? Because when the, this one, we why we call it eclipsed? Because the groups are what? Close. If they're close, they are what? Crowd. They interact with each other. If they interact with each other, even though hydrogen are small, but they're still interactions. And because they are the interaction, the energy is what? Hot. So that's why we have this energy profile as the single bond rotate. We said earlier, guys, take a look. 
If I rotate 360 degrees, I should have what? Three eclipsed and what? Three staggered. You see that? From eclipsed to staggered, lower confirmation, lowest. Of course, there are energy between. We, we only study these two extremes, the lowest one and what? The highest one. And the energy here is what? Something between. So that's why you can see that from eclipsed to the staggered, and then to the eclipsed, and then to the staggered. So from eclipsed to the staggered, energy what? Decrease, because getting far and far away, they let money like it. And from staggered to eclipsed, energy what? But we have six confirmations for this guy. Staggered and eclipsed. And keep in mind, staggered is more stable. It is more stable. Staggered is more stable. Now, because of the energy, because there's an energy difference between staggered and eclipsed, we want to give that energy a name. Because that's energy. And that means what? It means when the molecule is at here, means what? The energy, the molecule has some energy stored in it. Why? Because when energy, when the molecule moves from stagger to, uh, from eclipse to stagger, energy can be what? Released. So some energy is actually stored in here. Okay, stored in here. So we want to talk about that energy. Okay, talk about that energy. In order to talk about the energy, we first want to introduce a term called A strain is a type of energy that is stored when the compound is under structural distortion. If there's a distortion of structure, the compound will store a certain amount of energy. And that energy is called strain. In this chapter, we'll learn three types of three strains. Torsional strain, steric strain, and angle strain. Again, what is strain? Energy stored in the molecule when the structure is, is, is distorted. The structure is distorted. And we have three types of strain. Angle, steric, and torsional. Once you understand what is strain, now the energy stored when molecule is in an eclipsed conformation. Is that eclipse to stack energy is what higher eclipse that means energy stored in here at that point when the molecule is under eclipse the conformation that energy stored is called torsional strain okay, torsional strain and the torsional strain for a thing is 3 pcal per mole is 3.142 uh, 3.14 oh sorry 4.182 what is the specific for water for that the specific for water 4.184 I think 4.182 so 3 yes yes 4.184 okay, that's specific water that's how we convert between these two 3 kcal or 12.6 kilojoule. Okay, the difference, the, 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 the difference is the specific heat of water. So that means when molecule is under this eclipse for FA, the energy is 3 kcal higher than what? And that energy here, the molecule now has some energy stored is called torsional strain. Okay, torsional strain. And finally, why there's a torsional? Why energy can be stored? Is because of the interaction of the hydrogens. So you can easily imagine when the molecule is under eclipse the conformation like this. These two hydrogen are interacting because they're the closest. And these hydrogen are what? Interacting. And these two hydrogens are what? Interact. That's why we call it here what? 
non-bonded atoms separated by three bonds. Take a look, what does this mean? These two hydrogens, are they bonded? No, but they're separated by how many bonds? One, two, and one, three. Here, these two hydrogens, they're not bonded. One, two, and one, three. And because of an interaction, sorry, here, here, and here, they have three chemical energy. Okay, it's not required, you may see that, but you can imagine each pair contributes what? One k -cal. Three is three k -cal. They're all the same. So each hydrogen hydrogen act interaction actually worth of one k -cal distortion. Okay, the uh, torsional strength. So now you understand why we have stagger, one we have electrons, and what does it mean? Here is a summary of this molecule. The summary molecule. Uh, you can read uh, which one is more stable, which one is more, it's kind of a summary study. And one last word about this guy is because the energy for ethane is again how many? 3 kcal. That's a very small amount of energy. Why small? Because hydrogens are small. Even though, though they're interacting, they're small, so it's not that corrupt. Then the total distorted the torsional strain is 3. So because that energy is low, the energy can be provided by molecule collision. So one ethane collided with another. We don't want molecule colliding with each other all the time. And because of that, that barrier from stagger to eclipse to elixir to, to, to stagger can be easily overcome by the collision energy. So that tells us what? Tells ethane is actually free of rotation. Even though, remember, from stagger to eclipse, you need what? You need three because that's from lower to higher, right? But that three can be provided by what? Monica's colliding with each other. That's enough energy and room temperature. So that thing, the single bond is actually very fast to rotate. So eclipse and stagger are actually exchanging fast, even though this is more stable, stagger is more stable. So these are some facts about ethane. And to give you some idea about After we study ethane, let's take a look at a little more complicated molecule with four carbons. Butane. Okay, this is the butane. Okay, this is butane. And our focus is on the bond between number two and three. Okay, this bond. So, if I look along this single bond, again, the bond between what? Carbon two and carbon three. Here, this is butane. I didn't put a hydrogen. But remember, there are three hydrogen here, three hydrogen here. If I look along this CC single bond, what I will see is each carbon has how many groups? Three. Is that right? They are two hydrogen and a what? And a methyl. Is that right? Methyl carbon and methyl carbon. And the same, the, the carbon behind has what? Two carbon and what? Uh, two hydrogen and a what? And a methyl. Okay, and a methyl. So, let me introduce you the conformation of butane. Okay, I start here because these are from the from the picture. But I start here. Okay, I start here. Now, when you do a Newman projection, I start with what? A circle. The hydrogen here again. That's carbon. Hydrogen goes where? Hydrogen, hydrogen, methyl. Is that right? And the carbon behind methyl is where? Pointing off. Is that right? Hydrogen here, hydrogen here. Again, guys, you have to practice doing this very well. Okay, you will see these questions a lot in your test and quizzes. Does it make sense? This is the Newman projection for that. Now, if you look at this Newman projection over here, these two groups. Two metal groups, apparently they're bigger, right? They're dominant, they're bigger than hydrogen. The carbons now. These two groups are actually what? Further away, is that right? One up, one down. There's no way they can be further. And we call this staggered conformation. This is still staggered, do you agree, Abigail? And we call this staggered anti-conformation.
It's a stagger. It's gonna end. Now, I'm going forward. Let's say I rotate the carbon behind by 60 at a time, clockwise. Good, with me? Let's rotate the carbon behind by 60. What the monocle look like? Like this, is that right? Is that right? Again, carbon behind from stagger, this is anti. Agree? I rotate behind clockwise to here. So let's, let me draw it. Okay, 60 degree. The carbon in the front will be the same. The front carbon, I didn't, ro I didn't rotate, so I don't change anything. Agree? I only rotate the what? The back, so for easier. So now, methyl is where? It's here, hydrogen is here, and hydrogen is here. You guys agree? Big look. Right? Methyl moves to here. Hydrogen moves to here, and not hydrogen moves here. Let me ask you, what's the name of this eclipse or stagger? The eclipse. Good, it's an eclipse. It's called eclipse. Okay, called eclipse. Next, let me move another 60 degree. Okay, another 60 degree. Again, the carbon in the front does not move. Now, where's the metal? Here, is that right? And where's the hydrogen? Here and here. Do you agree? Here. Okay. Is that right? This is staggered or eclipsed? Staggered. Stagger. But this stagger is different from that stagger. Is that right? That stagger, two methyl is very far. This stagger, two methyl are not what? Not far. They're closer. So we give this stagger name a very weird name called Gush. These two are, okay, these two are two types of stagger, gauche and anti. Make sense? Keep going. Let me keep rotating, 60 degree. Now tell me what they look like now. Again, the front current never moves. You can choose anyone that doesn't move. I'm just showing you one way. You can rotate any way you want. Where's the metal now? Right behind here, is that right? Okay, methyl is here. Where's the hydrogen? Here and there is hydrogen. Okay, you agree? Okay, the monocle like this. Is that right? Now, here is it staggered or eclipsed? Eclipsed. Eclipsed, because two carbs, they're all one eclipsed. But that eclipse is from a that eclipse. Why? In what difference? Is two methyl groups are what? The closest, and we call this eclipsed total eclipsed. Okay, total eclipsed. Total eclipsed. Here. Total eclipsed. So that's eclipsed. That's what total eclipsed. Okay, moving. Sixty degree. Okay, again. Front carbon ne uh, never changes. I'm only moving the carbon in the back. Where's the metal now? To the left. Here, is that right? Okay, hydrogen here, hydrogen here. Can you tell me what's the name of this confirmation? Stagger. Stagger? And do we have a name for that stagger? This is anti. Okay, so that's Doge. Doge. Do you see that? These two are what? Not the same, but they're both what? Gauche, do you see that? What's gauche? Two carbons are staggered, but they're close. Okay, they're close. So we have two gauche. Okay, two gauche. Now how many degrees have we rotated? Six, six, six. We have rotated to 240. Another 60. I got, again, the front metal doesn't move. What do we have? Where's the metal? Here. Is that right? Where's the hydrogen? Here. And where's the hydrogen? Here. What is it called? Eclipse. Eclipse. Right? Not total eclipse. This is total eclipse. This? 
like that. And finally, 60 degree, you'll get back there and tight again. Okay. So, for butane, we have six confirmations if we rotate by 60 degrees. Okay, we have what? One anti, one total eclipse. We have two eclipsed and two what? Goshi. Still three eclipsed and three staggered, right? But now we give them names now. Because these this staggered and that staggered are different. They are different staggered. Okay, that's six confirmations for butane. Now, question, based on what we learned about ethane, which one do you think in this six have the highest energy? Which one? The highest energy one. What? The highest energy. Remember, what's highest? Think about what is highest for, for ethane. I think eclipse higher or, or, or staggered higher? Eclipse. Eclipse higher, right? So the highest energy one must from the eclipsed one, right? Here eclipse, here eclipse, and here is like which one of these three have higher energy? Oh, right. Total. Why? Because the methyl are what? Crowded. Yeah. Methyl is more crowded than hydrogen. So among those three eclipses, they're higher, but which one is highest? Total, Total eclipse higher. These two are what? Second higher. Does it make sense? Very good. Then you, if you understand there, you will be able to explain. Okay. Now, of course, apparently these three staggered have what? Low energy. But which one is the lowest? Uh, is that right? Why? Because these two guys are what? Far, Far away from the Earth. Why we consider these? Because they're metal. They're not hydrogen. They're bigger. So this guy is the lowest. These two gauche are what? Second lowest. If you do that mark, you should be able to understand that energy charge. This is total eclipse, do you see that? Highest, right? Then total eclipse, after total eclipse, definitely goes. Take a look, this is total eclipse. See that? After total eclipse, goes. Here, after total eclipse, goes. No matter where you, which way, you, just this way or that way. So after total eclipse, goes. Then, not the lowest. Goes is not the lowest. Then what? Eclipse, not the highest. Then what? Stagger. Oh, then sorry, the anti. Lowest. Then eclipse. Gosh. Back to. Uh, back to it. Uh, back to total eclipse. Three six. Does it make sense? Okay. Now, my energy here. One will care the most. Between the total eclipse to the anti, take a look. What's the what's the energy? Five kcal. Remember we said that thing, how much is it? Three, right? Each one is what? One. one. So for that logic, total eclipse, we have how many eclipses for hydrogen? Four. Two eclipses for hydrogen. Is that right? This is hydrogen. This is hydrogen. So that means how much is for this guy? If you three. Huh? Three. 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 One here, one here, three here, total is what? Five. Okay. You don't have to do that. I will ask you. They will probably give you, but I just want to help you understand. And lastly, what is the energy called? What is the energy called? Yes. The energy stored in here is called what? What strength? Uh, we have three types of strength. Tor yeah. Torsional strength. Okay, this is torsional strength. One is torsional strength. Torsion. The energy is double torque. Why? Because of the same thing about rotation. They're all from torsional strength. Okay, they're all called torsional strength. Make sense? I give you two examples. Of course, you will see very similar ones in your test. And no matter what Monica I give you, you analyze it. Look at which part you look and I draw the. You must be able to draw the all these. I may not ask you to draw all of them in your test, but we'll be able to or have the capacity of drawing. Rotate.
Jelly says to you, what do you get? Okay, what do you get? And analyze them, which one is higher energy, which has lower energy. I'm just helping you to better understand. Each C, HH torsional is about one kcal. Each CC torsional is about three kcal. You can see how much higher. Yes? It normally, because easier. Now, something between, there is something between, but not typical. And these are some typical, we can give them names. So basically, these are the typical ones. And this, of course, the, every single point here is a, is a confirmation. But if we understand these, we'll be able to understand at what stage the molecule may have what type of energy. Does it make sense? Yeah, you normally have, correct, when you draw them by 60 degrees. You can start with T, zero. Or you can start with, it doesn't matter where you start with you end up with the back well, after six rotations. Again, the molecule have millions of confirmation. You can rotate anywhere, it's a confirmation. But we study the extreme ones, the stagger and what? Something between is just energy. Okay, energy. Questions? Okay, I told you this topic without the model is very difficult to understand. Next. Let's learn more strings. Then we learn confirmation. Let's take a look at other strings. To study the second type of string, we will study cycloalkanes. Okay, cycloalkanes. The first cycloalkane is the simplest one. Three carbons. You cannot add a cyclo by two carbons, so it has to be three. A triangle, right? So this is cyclo what? Propane. In cyclopropane, I don't know if you noticed that or still remember your, your geometry class from middle school. What do you think the angle here is in a triangle? Total is what? 120. 180. <laughs> So which one is what? 60. 60. Uh, right? It's 60. That's yeah. because this is a, this, what's it called? Okay, now that my daughter was talking about, she even can say the name of this term. But anyway, it's 60. But we know in cyclopropane, we call it alkene, means what? The carbon is what type of hydrogen? Hybrid. SP3. Is that right? There are two hydrogen here. I just didn't, didn't put them. There are two hydrogen. Okay, let me put that. There are two hydrogen. Okay, there are two hydrogen. Let me put four of them. Okay, do you imagine the other two? Okay, let me put the four. There are other two here. So the carbon is still sp3. That means the bond angle should be what? 109.5. Is that right? But in reality, the bond angle is only what? 60. So because of the ring the bond angle is actually compressed from theoretical 109.5 to where? To 60. Just imagine, you're squeezing something, should be 109.5 to 60. Carbon is not happy because the bond angle shouldn't be 60. It's too small, too tight. And because of that, we have string here because the structure is distorted. Structure should have be list paper. Imagine, you have two, two springs, you compress it back to 60. And that string is called angle string. Angle for 109.5 to 60. That's one of the strings in cyclopropane. Another string is, if you look at the hydrogens, these two hydrogen, these two hydrogen, of course there are two hydrogen here, what do they look like? Look, eclipse, right? Why? Because the triangle has to be like this. So these two, again, what is eclipse? Three bonds interacting, right? One, two, three. The same, one, two, three. So you basically have how many pairs of eclipse? One, two, three, four, five, what? Six pairs of eclipse. Because you have your spikes here. And because of the eclipse, this guy also have a lot of torsional strength. Remember, eclipse is what? Torsional strength. That's angle strength. So cyclopropane, this guy, because of the triangle shape, it 
has a lot of strength. The total strength added up together is almost 28 kcal. It's a lot. And there's no way this can be released unless what? Unless you break the brain. Otherwise, the, the structure pyramid is triangle is very rigid shape. Okay, if you, you can imagine if you put a desk with three legs, it's very stable. Two legs never stable. So three legs is very stable. And because of that, because of the high energy stored in here, cyclopropane molecules are actually very reactive. Why? Because they want to react, and through reaction, they can what? Open up, release the energy. So, triangle cyclopropane molecules are actually undergoes a lot of ring opening reactions. Why open the ring? Why they want to open the ring? Because they can release the pressure, release the string. Again, two types of string, angle, angle string and what? And torsional string. Now, let's take a look at the case of cyclobutane. Adding one more carbon. Now, you will imagine if I have four carbons, three carbons is a triangle, four carbons should be what? Should be squared. But if you look at the square, let's say if it were square, it has what string? Torsional, right? Here, two hydrogen, two hydrogen, two hydrogen, two hydrogen. A lot of torsional string, right? Eight pairs. Right? And besides that, it has what? Angle. Angle string. What is the degree here? 90, 90 right? Square is 90. But ISP3 carbon is what? Oh, 109.5. Not as, as heavy as the triangle, but still you're compressing from 109.5 to what? To 90. So this guy also has angle string and torsional string, and a lot of torsional string because you have eight pairs. Okay, eight pairs. So, in order to release some of the string, in nature, I mean reality, the real confirmation of cyclobutane is not perfectly square. Remember, no square is like a what? All on the same plane. In reality, the ring is actually puckered like this. Triangle, you cannot pucker it because it has to be a plane. Square, you can do this. Kind of like this, a little bit puckered. Once you do this, the angle string actually got worse because the bond angle is even less than 90 here. 88, a little bit. Okay, so the angle string get worse. Why? Because you're coming from 109.5. Does that make sense? But there is advantage of doing the puckering because after you do the pucker, take a look. It used to be eclipsed hydrogens, now what? No longer eclipsed. So, Puckering the ring worsened the angle string, but what? Released a lot of torsional string. Overall, the energy is still lower than planar. Okay, Lord. So here, the string total is about 26, lower than that 28. But still, string is heavy. Okay, the string is heavy. So here's what the molecule looks like. You can see it is a little bit pucker. Not too much, a little bit. Okay, not too, too much, a little bit. From 90 to 88. So that's cyclobutane. Still has two types of strays, angle and torsional. But torsional is released. They call it butterfly. I don't know why it's called butterfly. Maybe you see it is. Okay, move on. If I add one more current, Okay, the string is much lower now because ring gets bigger. Okay, ring gets bigger. Oops. We have one more carbon to cyclopentane. Okay, to cyclopentane. Now, if the ring is still planar, we you could imagine we could still have a lot of what? Torsional string, right? Eclipsed, eclipsed. Let me put the height. Right, 
If it were planar, like on my hand, plane, you can see the hydrogen or what? Eclipsed. Every hydrogen is eclipsed. That's not going to happen. Nature doesn't like it. So, in reality, one of the carbon in cyclopropane, I'm sorry, cyclopentane, is always out of the plane. Either up or down, doesn't matter, they're the same. So, the, the, in reality, the model looks like this. Can you guys imagine that? Or this guy. Anyone. There are five of them. Anyone. And doing that, the angle strain gets, again, a little heavier, but the torsion of strain is greatly reduced. Otherwise, you have 10 pairs. And we call that envelope. That confirmation, envelope confirmation. And that's very nice. I think I can't imagine that's an envelope. Do you see that? The, the bottom of the envelope be kind of like an envelope. So cyclopentane confirmation is an envelope. Again, this, this one of the carbon can be either up or down, and they alternate either one, okay, the fast. Five of them are equivalent, so either this guy, or that guy, or that guy down there, either way, as you got an envelope. So four in the same plane, one out of the plane. Okay, what I call that envelope confirmation. And you can see the strain total is only 6.5 down. It's very low. But still has angle strain and torsional strain. Okay, you can check, I always don't can remember what is the angle for pentagon. One, one. 109 now, but think about it. I said earlier, because of the envelope confirmation, the angle strain got even actually worse. So the real angle may be less than 108. So that means the angle strain is worse. But again, because of that, the torsional strain is what? Okay, but the strain is very low now, 6.5. Okay, and five member ring is actually a very common ring in nature. Why? Imagine because the strain is what? Get low. Three member and four member, normally you don't find in nature. We do have those, but it doesn't exist in Why? Because they're too unstable. They want to open up. Five member is very common in nature. The last example is six member. Okay, we spent a lot of time on this, on this guy. Six member is the most stable cycloalkene ring because it comes with almost no string at all, close to zero string. Why? Because it, it, it adopts a very beautiful conformation called chair conformation. Okay, this is hard to demonstrate. But I'll try. Okay, it adopts a very nice demonstrate a chair confirmation. Okay, chair. You can imagine this is six. Take a look. These four are kind of like your, your butt sits. This is the leg of the chair. This is the, the back of the chair. Can you can imagine that? The ring look like this. See that? Chair. Your flat back leg. Like this. You see that? One, this guy is above, this guy is down. At least four arms in, on my hand. This is the confirmation for hexane, cyclohexane. We call that chair confirmation. The reason this confirmation is beautiful, it's, it's, it comes with no string, is because the bond angle is very close to 109.5. And you can see that. Take a look. Take a look at the hydrogens. They're all what? All what? Huh? Close, they're gonna be string. They're all what? Uh, staggered. staggered. Is that right? You see that? If you look at any two, take a look. Okay, if it is chair, it's all staggered. Very beautifully staggered. All the hydrogens are actually staggered. Okay. So, cyclohexane. Almost come with no string. We'll see more. And it comes in chair. 
Why two equipment is chaired? Because what? In this case, this is the leg, that's the back. I can do this is the back and that what? That's the leg. Or either one, either two. So that means the ring can flip. Yeah, the ring can flip. six hydrogen, there are six over here, okay? This one, this one, this one, they're what? Equatorial. Why they're equatorial? Because they're what? Near the plane of this of the cyclohexane. But this one, this one, this one, near here and here, these two and that, they're not on the plane, they're what? Straight up or what? Straight down, you see that? You see that? These three, again, these three are equatorial. These three are called axon. They're perpendicular to the ring, if you want to have them. And the, this one says parallel to the ring axis. Where's the axis? Straight across. Straight through. So, in a cyclohexane, there are 12 hydrogens, if you remember. Six carbons, each carbon has two hydrogens. So 12 hydrogens. Among these two 12 hydrogens, there will be six equatorial and what? Six axial. I'm showing six here, so that of course there are three equatorial and what? Three axial, there are three others. Again, look at this confirmation, equatorial, Axial, axial, equatorial, axial, three, three, axial. These three, these three, equatorial. 
Okay, don't worry, I'll show you how to draw that, by the way. There is one. On the board, I don't use that method. I, I never use that method, but you take your time, give you one minute or two, try to practice drawing a chair confirmation. I, I draw mine in millions of times. I don't even follow these, but that may be helpful to practice drawing a chair. Follow that, use that. If you can draw without it, it's fine. I'm just they're drawing. You don't have to use one method. But here is the textbook one helping you to draw a chair confirmation. shows so again if you can draw comfortably chair you don't have to follow the rules uh, there's no way best way to draw a chair somebody can use the one method of course it's not but again practice drawing chair for confirmation uh, because you will draw them a lot right now let me draw a big one okay something I do want to mention to you when you draw a chair okay when you draw a chair is when you have a chair confirmation, okay, when you have chair confirmation, there are actually three pairs of parallel lines. Look at my chair. I'm showing you what these three pairs. These two lines are actually parallel. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfectly parallel. They should be parallel. And these two lines should be parallel. You see that? And these two lines should be parallel. I mean, again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but that's something to help you to adjust to make it nicer. If they're all parallel, the structure most likely will be very pretty. Make sense? Next, remember we said earlier, after we have chair, each carbon has two bonds, right? On the, on the carbon. One is called equatorial and one is called what? Axial. Axial. So, we total have how many equatorial, how many axial? Six equatorial and what? Six axial. So let me show you how to draw equatorial. The reason we call them equatorial because they're what? On the plate. So that means equatorial bond will be parallel with something on the plane. And you're gonna find another one. For example, on this bond carbon, if you want to draw equatorial, it must be parallel to these two bonds. You see that? Here, here, here. Move my, move my pen. You see parallel? You see that? That means this bond, if I want to draw equatorial, will be parallel with what? These two as well. So how do I draw it? Does it make sense? Let me draw a different color black one so you can see. That's the equatorial here. That's the equatorial here. They're both parallel to what? To this two bond. See that? How about these two? If I want to draw equatorial, what what which one to the parallel with? That and what? Is that right? So that means what? I need what? Here. Does it make sense? And the same thing here. It has to be parallel with what? That and that, so I need what? Point like this. 
Okay, let me use the rumor. Show you the parallel again. Okay. Look, the sky parallel is what? With these two, right? The sky parallel is what? These two. The sky parallel is what? These two. That guy parallel with. So I've do, I've done four now. I can do the other two. This one parallel with what? These two. Is that right? The parallel of these two has you to go what? Go like this. And this one. And this picture shows you the, the one I, I'm trying to give you. Okay, these are six equatorial. Equatorial is a little more difficult. Axo actually easier. Why? Because axo either what? Straight out or what? Yeah. Straight down. So what do you think this one should be up or down? Uh, down because you have what? Up one already. So this one should be straight down. How about this? Axo will be up or down. Down already, see that? Again, straight up, straight down, perpendicular. So down, up, down, sorry, up. So axel, you have what? Three up and what? Three down. If you look at the equatorial here, guys, take a look. These are the three axes, the six axes. Three up and what? Three down. You see that? If you look at the axle, they're actually kind of up and down. Up, down, up, down, up, down. But they're not straight up, straight down. They're parallel to the line. Okay, again, this is just help you to, to practice drawing. Uh, drawing. And this is the summary of axle and exam. Okay, again, guys, you have to get used to the drawing of this. You have to get used to the drawing. Okay, each carbon have two, one XL, one equatorial, and they're alternating. Okay, they're alternating. Finally, remember we said chair conformation has what? Two equivalent. Is that right? Means what? Bring the ring flips, you get another chair. So two chairs because of ring flip. So if a ring flips, if a bond was axel, will become equatorial. If it flips. If the bond was equatorial, it will become axel after it flips. I'll give you one example here. Take a look. Let's say this guy, right? It's what? Axel and what? Equatorial, is that right? See, if I flip it down, the axel becomes what? Equatorial, the equatorial becomes what? Axel. So, as the pink one are equatorial, after ring flips, the pink one becomes what? Axel. Axel, of course, three up, three down. That's what we call two. Confirmations. And the ring flips, the ring flips is actually not direct flip. Not I'm showing that easy here. It actually undergoes a lot of weird confirmations. We don't talk about that detail, so if you're interested, take a look at the image chart. It actually undergoes half chair, twist the boat, boat, twist boat again, then half chair, then back to another chair. A lot of weird confirmations we can, uh, not like a very easy flip, the ring flips like a very kind of, but I do want to show you one confirmation besides the chair for cyclic saying is boat confirmation. Okay, it's very funny, the boat is just like a boat like this. So that means both the carbons are not up, down, and really like this. Okay, boat confirmation is not the stable, the, the, not the lowest energy one because there's a flat pole, a flat pole. Interaction. Okay, this is the boat. Okay, what it looks like here, showing the picture between two chairs. A 
That's the boat. Makes sense, right? It's kind of like a boat, right? It is the boat. Now, the reason boat is not stable because here, you see that? And boat confirmation, these two hydrogen, you only they're very far away from each other. You can see they're not three bonds away. They're one, two, three, four, five bonds away. But because of the boat confirmation, these two hydrogens are brought together in like a bump in your head. And we call that interaction boat confirmation. And that's kind of like a string, making boat energy lower than, uh, higher than J, pretty much higher than J. Okay, uh, so that's cyclohexane. Okay, understand what is cyclohexane? And how to draw is chair confirmation. And most importantly, here guys, you will draw a lot. You will see a lot of questions on this too. Good? Okay, I will practice you with drawing when we go through a little more complicated cyclohexane, not that complicated, just adding some groups. No longer all hydrogens. This cyclohexane to C6H12 is all hydrogens. But let's take a look. If, okay, if I have a methyl group on one of the carbons, if I have a methyl cyclohexane, if I have a methyl cyclohexane, that means I have a carbon. Of course, if I have a carbon here, this carbon can either be what? Axel or what? Equatorial, because the ring can flip, right? If it was axel now, for example, where this is chair, Chair, right? This is chair confirmation. This guy apparently is what? Equatorial, right? There's methyl here. Or the ring can flip, then this guy becomes what? Axel. Axel. So we have two cases Axel versus equatorial cyclohexane. The first one, axel or equatorial? Axel, very good. The second one, Flipped. And because of the methyl, they're no longer hydrogen. If they're all hydrogen, it's both equivalent, right? But if there's a methyl here, these two guys will no longer be equivalent. As a matter of fact, for this guy, one is more stable than the other. Which one do you think is more stable? Which one has higher energy? Which one what we understand it? Which one do you think has higher energy? Equatorial. Equatorial or axel? Equatorial? What you? Equatorial. Equatorial? Okay, let's take a look. This is when axel, uh, the methyl is equatorial. This is the methyl when the methyl is axel. When methyl is in axo conformation, the methyl group hydrogen or carbon can actually interact with the three and five axo hydrogens. This is number one, two, three, four, five. So these are these two pink hydrogens are actually the axo hydrogens on carbon number three. And carbon number five, this is on carbon number one. Why they interact? They can interact because they're all what? Axel. And because of that, we have another type of string called steric string. Steric string. If I have a string, means what? Which one is more stable? Which one is more higher energy? String. Huh? With the string has higher energy. What is the string? Here is the string called steric string. Why do we call steric? Because they're what? They're kind of like a string in a three dimensional way. Normally they're far away, right? They're not three bonds away from each other. They're not because of angle. They're because of what? Because when the methyl is in axial conformation, the methyl will interact with something normally will be far away from it. Because see how many bonds are away from it. A lot of bonds. But because they're all axle, one, three, and five, 
these four are actually closer now. And we call that one, three, diaxial interaction. What, what do you mean one, three? One, two, three. One, two, three. You see that? The, the, the distance between either these two pairs are both what? Three one, three. Three bumps. Not three bumps, I mean three. One, three locations away. And they're both what? Axel. Both what? Axel. That's what we call one, three, diaxel. And one, three, diaxel actually cause 1.74 ppm of energy difference. So the step straight forward methyl, axo methyl, is 1.74 kcal higher than equator. Does it make sense? First, understand the strength. Axo has higher energy. Now, we said earlier, if there's a methyl, these two won't be equivalent. Okay, these two won't be equivalent. So, won't be equivalent means what? There won't be 50% chance. Which one has higher percentage? Which one has higher percentage? Axel. Axel or equator? Think about it. Okay, think about the logic. We know Axel has higher energy. Is that right? Because of what? Because of steric strength. Higher energy means what? Less stable. Less stable means what? Nature doesn't want that way. Nature wants what? Stabilize. So means if you have a mixture of both, the equatorial one will be dominant. The ring does flip, but the flip is not 100%. So the equatorial one will be dominant. You will have more equatorial than the axle. Why? Because equatorial is more what? Stable. The energy is lower. How much lower? 1.74. And because we know this, and I don't know both of you or, or either one of you, remember this equation from chemistry 112. Delta G equals to minus RT long K. Delta G means the energy. Difference in energy. R, gas constant. T, temperature, log, just log, natural log. K is called equilibrium constant. If we assume the axial equatorial under equilibrium, we can calculate the K. We plug in the numbers. Okay, log K equals to energy. What's energy? We know the energy. 7.28 kilo kilojoule or 1.7. Here we use kilojoule. This energy, we know the difference between these two guys. They're under equilibrium. So the energy is 7.28. Okay, delta G is 7.88. We know the R is a constant, 8.31 more. Temperature, let's assume room temperature, 298K. Then after the math divide, then you get law, and then, then solve the law, and you get K actually equals to 18.9. 18.9 means what? 18.9 over 1. This tells you, for each one next cell, there's 18.9 equator. The ratio of X equator versus X cell will be almost 19.1. Means what? If you have 20 guys, 19 will be what? Equatorial. One is X cell. So the percentage of equatorial will be what? 19 over 20, right? Total is 20. Okay, 19.9. So there are approximately 95% of what? Only 5% will be asked. We can do the math. It's a very simple math. If you, if even you don't remember the equation, here is the equation. All you need is what? The energy, and also you know which one is more stable. You will get a K. Okay, you will get a K. Here is the chart showing you different steric strains. Okay, and because of the math, you can know what it, it implies now. Okay, I'll explain. Especially, I'll explain to the one in the box. We know methyl. The steric strain is how much? 
7.28, right? Which is over 1.7 kcal. And what's the percentage look like? 95% is what? Equatorial. Is that right? So take a look at these guys. If I have an ethyl group, which is slightly bigger than methyl, they store what? Very similar. So that means if you have an ethyl group, the percentage is maybe 96, 97. You can do the math if you want. 96, 97. Still slightly bigger, but still equatorial. Is that right? But take a look at these two. What is the group called? Three carbons bond into the secondary carbon. Isopropyl group. Okay, isopropyl. Three carbons, isopropyl. What is this called? Now, these two groups are both large groups. It's much larger than these. And because of these two groups, the steric strain is bigger. Why? Because the interaction is greater. And if the steric strain is higher than these two, it means what? The percentage of the equatorial is what? Higher than 95%. Is that right? Maybe 98, 99, especially this guy. If you can do the math, maybe over 99%. Means what? Means if I have a T butyl, again, guys, what T butyl look like? That, that is fast, sorry. Don't, don't, don't. Hey. If I have a T butyl, again, T butyl look like this. Okay, this is the T butyl group. Sorry. Okay, T butyl like this. One, two, three, four carbon. This is the T butyl, a big group. And you can see the energy is what? 21. If you do the math, you can later try the math. The percentage will be over 99%. So that means what? If you have a T butyl, the conformation of the chair will almost exclusively lock the T butyl on where? Equatorial axle. Huh? Equatorial axle. Which one? Equatorial. Equatorial. Do you remember Equatorial? Okay, this is a tubular, okay? And I can do all cross. Just one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is a huge group. If I have a huge group, means what? There's no way you can have axel. Why? Because the percentage is over 99%. The energy is too high. This, the nature never want to flip it. Why? Because if you flip this one to axel, the energy is going to be too high. So, if I have a T butyl on cyclohexane ring, the conformation is no longer flippable. The ring is basically what? Locked. Locked means what? Locked means the T butyl must be in where? I'm sorry, equatorial. Yes. Does it make sense? This table shows you what you can expect. Again, this is 7.28. The percent is 95%. Anything lower than that, maybe lower than 95, but anything higher will be higher than 95. This guy is close to 100. So when you have a, this guy, if no matter with one or other groups, anywhere you have a, have a, have a tibial, the tibial has to be where? And that's the reason we get the map. You can do the map. If you don't remember the equation, I'll give it to you. You need to understand what that means. Okay, the, the energy is what? Steric strain. Because cyclohexane doesn't have any other strains. And these numbers are from, 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 from constants. Temperature is room temperature. And then you get the technique. All right? Uh, I think that's all for today. Let me stop the recording and I'll show tell you the plan for tomorrow.